Motor Week is made possible by Auto Value and Bumper to Bumper and TireRack.com. In the 80s, sedans from Europe have become more popular than ever. That's why Ford started importing their German-made XR4 Ti. To do that, they created a whole new division named Mercur. Despite the public's ravenous appetite for cars from Europe, though, the Mercur XR4 Ti hasn't sold very well. But Ford isn't about to give up yet. They're just introducing another Mercur model, a five-door, five-passenger sedan, and it's called the Scorpio. It's bigger than the XR4 Ti and more expensive. So will this Scorpio be the German Ford that makes Mercur a household name? We answer that with a definite could be. The Mercur Scorpio has a lot going for it. Introduced in Europe last year, it was car of the year there. And as European sedans go these days, the Scorpio is pretty daring. The Scorpio's upswept rear end and semi-disguised rear hatch separate it from any German luxury sedan sold in America. The trouble is, conventional marketing wisdom says most people look down on upmarket hatchback sedans. Ford isn't too worried about that, though. They only plan to sell 15,000 Scorpios this year. And those few buyers will get one of the most versatile luxury sedans ever offered. Lift the low opening rear hatch and you'll find a 60-40 folding rear seat. You can fold one side to carry long items and keep the other for passengers. Or fold the bottom seat cushion for flat station wagon-like cargo space. There's a lot of usable space in the Scorpio. And that's quite an achievement considering this is a rear drive design. And while many German sedans have stark brooding interiors, the Scorpio's is almost plush. There is a real wood accent on the dash and this Italian-looking leather upholstery, part of the optional Touring package. The seats are supportive, if hard, but both adjust 16 ways. They use seat-shaped adjustments, a myriad of knobs, and Ford's familiar blow-up bulb for lumbar support. If you still can't find the right driving position, the steering column telescopes as well as tilts, and the signal and wiper stalks rise and fall with the wheel. The wheel itself houses cruise control buttons and all other controls are grouped within easy reach on the driver's dash pod. Light controls are on the left, and if you order the Turing package, a simple to use four function trip computer goes here too. Switches for the automatic climate control are on the right, and they're not as straightforward as they could be, but are easy to master. The backlit gauges are large and clear, but there are no readouts here for oil pressure or volts. The rear seat offers electric tilt adjustment, adjustable head restraints, and shoulder belts. There's plenty of leg room here too, and much better than average headroom. Interior niceties include power mirrors and windows, central locking, and a two-way electric sunroof that's also part of the Touring package. Intelligent novelties include a bright orange, easy-to-reach hood release that's located on the underside of the steering column. There's also a rear wiper that starts automatically if the front wipers are going and the car is put in reverse, and a very difficult to duplicate ignition and door key as well as an outside rear hatch release that locks when the engine is running to foil cargo theft attempts and traffic jams. And a pair of inside hatch closing grab handles. But the Scorpio's unique for a German car features are contrasted by this, a not so unique 2.9 liter V6. Its basic design dates back to 1964. It doesn't have four valves per cylinder or even a single overhead cam. It does have newly designed cylinder heads and multi-port fuel injection, and it makes a respectable 144 horsepower and 162 pound-feet of torque. To its credit, the engine is fairly smooth and delivers power without much fuss. It pushed our Scorpio through the quarter mile in a respectable 17.7 seconds at 81 miles per hour. The Scorpio can be had with either a five-speed manual or this optional four-speed automatic. Ford figures most drivers will opt for the latter, although its maze of safety shift notches is tiresome. Our car had the automatic and still made it from zero to 60 in a quick 10.2 seconds. And the Scorpio stops even better than it goes. Like most cars in its class, the Scorpio has anti-lock brakes. They make it possible to retain steering control under full brake pressure. Brake pedal feel and control was excellent in our car. Its average in six stops was a short 108 feet. And just about all of the Scorpio's controls feel good. Its rack and pinion steering has a variable ratio. It's fairly slow for good stability at high speed and fast for deeper cuts of the steering wheel. 
body roll is more than we expected, as the Scorpio's suspension feels softer than those in other German sedans. On the switchback, the tail hangs out more than some will like, but it snaps back under power. Control is very good. In a steady turn, the Scorpio just plows mildly to tell you when you're going too fast. Rear wheel tracking is obedient. And the Scorpio also rides better than many German sedans, but it still retains that solid but isolated feel. It's also fairly quiet, generating only 67 decibels at 55. The EPA rates the Mercur Scorpio at 17 city, 23 highway. We managed a figure of 20 in normal driving. As for more important figures, the Scorpio will set you back $23,200. Add the Turing package and the damages come to $26,500. That's comparable to some Audi 5000s and thousands less than many other better known German sedans. To make the Scorpio even more tempting, Ford guarantees that a two to four year old Scorpio will retain the same percentage of its resale value as a Mercedes Benz 190. So value tops our list of hits, followed by interior luxury, utility, and well-thought-out novelties. We also are impressed with the Scorpio's track performance and its highway ride quality. On the miss side, we regret the Scorpio's lack of instrumentation and its awkward climate control switches. And while we're at it, the automatic safety latch shifter is awkward to use, too. Speaking of safety, the Scorpio passes with halogen headlamps, radial tires, 5 mile per hour bumpers, and rear seat shoulder belts. It only fails to have front passive restraints. From a marketing point of view, the name Mercor has been a Ford faux pas from the beginning. Some speculate it's the reason for the XR4Ti slow sales. But the Scorpio, with an outstanding combination of features that aren't available on any other German-made car, should be a marketing success, despite having a first name that most car salesmen still can't pronounce.